What's up traders, Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. Welcome to your market recap video. It is August 16th of 2022. Today we went full on Michael Burry team. Let's go through our box scores and let's talk about today's action. S&P 500 as measured by the SPY finished up 0.2%. Our NASDAQ QQQ finished down 0.23%. Our small caps finished down just a smidge, down 0.04%. Dogs of the Dow were up 0.7%. Every dog has its day. Today, the Dow Jones actually led us to the upside. And then we have the ARK Innovation ETF, which is down 2.78%. So this is kind of sloppy action. This is kind of like a mess here. And we are starting to see the rot underneath the surface of this rally. You know, S&P 500 is up like a smooth like 12% in a straight line. NASDAQ is up 20% really all of these indices have had a fantastic run you can see pretty much everything closed towards the upper middle end of its day's range and we did have a vol crush across some of these indices but not really too much movement on the volatility front we did have 50 percent advancers on the small caps dead even and we ended up finishing out the day with 63.5 percent up volume the trend model remains at a plus one now let's dig into our heat map so the big story for today is Walmart and Home Depot lead the market higher. Walmart had an earnings report and the earnings were really not even that great. But you know how the market is. Sometimes if the market's expecting a really bad number, if the number is just like meh, then that's actually a good thing and the stock could rally. And we saw the same thing happen with Home Depot. Let's actually just take a look at those earnings and you'll see exactly what I mean. So let's actually pull up my MarketSmith platform and I'm going to go over to Walmart just to see the results, see how the company's progressing. So they reported negative 1% earnings. So the earnings actually shrunk, but only a little smidge, basically staying about the same. And then we did have a slight sales, sales bump up 8% sales growth. So is that like a great number? No, it's certainly not. But the assumption here is maybe, maybe the street was expecting something really bad. And for that reason, the stock is rallying. Home Depot as well. Oh my gosh, look at these great numbers. Sales were up 4% and EPS was up 6%. So really nothing too special. We did have WWE finally report earnings. I've been trading this stock pretty actively. I know Yarrow and some of the other members of our group, I believe they've been trafficking in this stock as well. Shout out to everyone in the pristine capital trading community. You guys are all getting better and you're all making me better as well. So we have WWE, this stock, check check out what this one reported, uh, June of 2022. Wow, this actually isn't that great, geez. Wait, is this even right? This can't be right. Sales growth, sales of 28.2%. Sales of 28.2 million, what? There's no way that's right. Hang on, Market Smith, calling BS on you. WWE, I'm checking a second source. You know, this is the thing, like because I'm in this trading game and I'm pretty heavy and I got multiple sources for this information. So what do we see here? WWE. Yeah, they had sales of 328 million. So that's that's off in Market Smith. So anyway, but yeah, the earnings that I saw, WWE, I think they had a pretty good quarter. And this stock really had almost no reaction. I did end up day trading this stock. And let's see what it actually did. If we go to Finviz. Oh my gosh, yeah, the, the strength in this stock was sold. But check it out, I did do a day trade in WWE. So let's just flip over to my trades here. This was the only common stock trade that I did for today's session. And you can see I got long the WWE common shares in the pre-market for 72.81. I just saw that beat and raise quarter. This was at 7.42. I noticed, hey, my overheat model, I was going to say tested positive like it's COVID, but it flipped positive. And for that reason, I just wanted a piece out of this. I sold off half for 74.50, and I sold the other half off uh, for 74.50 as well. So yeah, this one, honestly, pretty nice little base hit, but nothing more than that. Let's take a look at these indices. Where are we at? S&P 500. Oh my gosh, sorry, 608. So yeah, we're trading in the after hours. Yeah, S&P 500 actually tagged this 200-day simple moving average. And man, this thing just continues to glide up into options expiration week. So on Friday, top X, we're gonna have 30% of our dealer gamma in the S&P 500 rolling off. 
we're also going to have about 30% of the NASDAQ dealer gamma rolling off as well. And the dealer gamma tends to keep the market pinned. So it is possible that into Friday, we really just oscillate around this 4,300 level. But you can see we're pretty extended away from the 20 day SMA. Oh my gosh, look at this monthly value area. Look how extended away we are. And then even the five day EMA is kind of catching up to price because we're getting a little bit slower here. But yeah, you, honestly, for me, I just see the risk reward pretty skewed to the downside because my risk model tipped me off yesterday into the close. That's why I took some additional short positions. I actually went short the NASDAQ today as well. And uh, the NASDAQ, you can see, does have a VPOC up here. So maybe if the market gets even crazier, maybe the NASDAQ tests that. I added to my shorts in the small caps today. And the small caps continue to trade above this 200-day simple moving average. And then our dogs of the Dow had a pretty good showing today. And the Dow, wow, we got a VPOC up here at 34 0.5k so maybe we end up testing that but i really think if you're getting long here this is just poor location for a long like after such a big rally into opex which is a wild card into month end remember when the market was selling off the typical pattern was oh my gosh we got such weak markets but at month end there's buying flows coming into the market to rebalance remember that that was several months in the beginning of this year now we're in a different situation. The market has rallied so much. Are those month end rebalancing flows gonna be all just like inflows into the market? We'll have to see, but I doubt those are gonna be as big. And then we have the QT program, which is gonna be doubling in pace in September. I honestly think that the beginning of this rally, and we've ridden this whole thing up to the upside. I just flipped short. I believe it was either Friday or yesterday that I flipped net short. Um, so we've been a beneficiary, been a participant. We were getting along in May. And it's like, okay, everyone's too bearish. The Federal Reserve could get more dovish, blah, blah, blah. But now at this point with the market this far up, I honestly think it's really just a momentum trade. And today we started to see some meme stock madness. Look at this. GameStop, which is like the original meme stock, was up 6.33%. But you can see it tried to make a run. The big winner in terms of meme stocks today was Bed Bath & Beyond. And look at what happened. Bed Bath & Beyond went all the way up to almost $30 a share. From, oh my gosh, it opened up. <laughs> it opened up at 15. So the stock went up almost 100% from the open. And then you can see it closed out almost up 30%. So the top was sold in Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, AMC also tried to make a meme stock move. I'm actually short AMC. And I was like, oh my gosh, these meme stock players, they're about to posterize me, aren't they? But sure enough, the top was sold in this one as well. Then the other big one, we had Fubo. Look at this. Fubo intraday was up over 80%. And then in like 10 minutes, just had a massive sell-off. Let's go to the five-minute chart. Look at that. Can you imagine that the stocks, like imagine like you're that retail punter that bought this thing up at 814 and then all of a sudden five minutes later the stock's down at 686 like oh my gosh imagine that, like you go to use the bathroom and then all of a sudden it's like oh my god <laughs> so yeah with these meme stocks if you catch them early you can get a really nice winner and we were talking about that internally within our group and i do want to create a process for catching some of these meme stock runs that way for the next time it happens we can take advantage that's typically what I do as I go through my process. Everything in the market repeats itself. It's really just like the goldfish, like punter brain traders that don't realize that. And like as soon as the meme stocks stop running, they just completely forget about them. Then they move on to the next shiny object. For us and what we do, when we notice there's an opportunity in the market that we're not taking advantage of, typically what I do is I go, okay, this, this is probably going to happen one to three times a year. So, okay, let me not play for this time it's happening. Let me build a process out for the next time that it happens. So more to come on that, but the next time this meme stock rally happens, we're gonna have some dogs in this fight. But anyway, yeah, the meme stocks, they all rally, then they started coming off their highs. Typically, these meme rallies happen, do they happen at the beginning of a rally? No, they typically happen towards the end of a rally. And I would imagine there's hedge funds, big institutions that are probably short these names. 
that are probably blowing up because all of these are just ripping out to the upside. But yeah, I think while when you start to see this happen, it's definitely a sign to just have a little bit more caution. Like we even saw Sava, there was news of an insider buy and Sava just like ripped to the upside in the, in the after hours. <laughs> Look at this. So Sava just like, boom, oh my gosh, a director bought the stock and then it just moved to the upside. So we will have to see if we go to my trades for today, um, you'll see what else I put on the books. And yeah, I went from being heavily along the market to piecing out of my longs to flat the market to now being net short. And check this out. So I added some September 16th, 428 puts. This was in the morning. Then I shorted DraftKings via some October puts. Then I added to my IWM September puts for 352. I got a really nice price on these. Then I also added some QQQ puts. And really like I've just been doing this for so long. Like there's there's traders out there that they just go like, oh, I'm getting short. And they blow their load like all in one go. I try to make sure to really like scale in and uh, you know, just really play the risk reward and make sure that I'm not, you know, going too overboard all at once. So honestly, heading into the end of the week, we do have three more trading days till OPEX. Could the next three trading days just be super choppy and boring? That is certainly possible for me personally, since I'm net short the market. For all I know, maybe the S&P 500 has another plus 1% day tomorrow, plus a half percent day. I will say that's not going to change my thesis that this market is overheating. So for me, it's kind of like if you're planting a garden and you want to see your garden grow, are you going to be like watching the garden every two seconds and like, has it grown yet? Has it grown yet? Oh, no, it hasn't grown yet. Like You don't want to be doing that. For me, like because I'm a swing trader, I actually know that the more that I do that, the more likely I am to make a bad decision. So for me, it's like super important. Like if you're if you're a member, you might be like, damn, this guy just like shorted the market. And now he's like going to the gym. But that's honestly like the best way I've found to really like make sure that I stick with positions. Just be like, okay, do I have everything on the books that I need? All right, let me go to the gym. Let me do this. Let me do that. And really just let the positions marinate. I do want to point out one more thing that I forgot before we wrap up. This is another key that I've been watching. So like market leaders like end phase, are they leading the rally? No, they're not. End phase was down today. Names like PLAB, really good semiconductor stock. Was it leading the rally today? No, it was not, it was down. Stocks like Celsius that were leading the rally. Was it up today? No, put in a nice support candle at the 20 day simple moving average, there were buyers there. And I would imagine so if this is the best stock in the market, which it honestly could be, but was it even green on the session? No, it wasn't. So when I notice like the leaders aren't leading anymore, everyone's going to consumer staples. Like, let me actually pull that up. I believe I forgot that, sorry about that. So let's go to sectors and style factors real quick and then we're gonna break. So I'm actually gonna go for a second run today with my girlfriend. So sectors, right off the bat, our top three momentum sectors are blockchain, fintech, and solar. Were any of those groups up today? No. Honestly, the group that was up the most today was retail. And I took a look at this ETF because I wanted to see like what's driving that. And there's a bunch of high short interest retail stocks, you know, that are that were leading that. So honestly, like, you know, it's just like a meme squeeze. And the other leaders, we did have home builders up 1.02%. Um, we saw consumer staples. Yeah, consumer staples was the second best winner and it was up 1.13%. Are we gonna have like a next leg of like a bull market led by consumer staples? It's possible, but it doesn't really seem that likely to me. And then if we look at our style factors, the best performing style factor for today was high div, low vol, up 0.64%. We also saw min vol, was the second best performer. So we're seeing that, think about this, minimum volatility. These numbers every day, the reason why we look at these numbers is because this tells us what big money and what institutions are actually allocating to. So would big institutions be allocating to MinVol if they were getting like super aggressive and thought everything was great? No, I don't think so. I've seen this pattern so many times before. Typically what happens is 
Uh, everyone buys. Everyone's along their favorite stocks. The favorite stocks lead the rally. The best stocks lead the rally. And we've seen that. Then you start to see some profit taking in those really good names. And you start to see the money move into the more defensive, more liquid areas of the market. And then from there, a lot of times that money comes out of the market. That's my own pattern that I've noticed. For, so for me to see this Minval leading, this triggers something in my monkey brain that, hey, something could be a little bit off here. But that's, you know, we'll have to see. Only the future will tell. No crystal ball here. But it's going to be really fun to just see what happens together. With that said, that about does it for this market recap video. Everyone, enjoy your evening. As always, we're going to see you all tomorrow. And thank you so much for everyone that's been watching these videos as well as all the new subscribers to the channel. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much.